Well, so one of the markets that we like is Indonesia. And Indonesia, of course, has got the, this wonderful structural story. It's got a um, much better policy framework than was the case in the past. It's got a young and growing population. It's also got exposure to commodities, including commodities used in the whole air carbon transition supply chain. Sure. It's got this cyclical upswing, of course, from commodity prices and also from recovery from COVID. And so there's a, a lot to like about it. Now, the thing about Indonesia is it's already done relatively well compared to many other markets. And so you've got to be super selective with the stocks you buy because they're not all equally as good value. But that's one area. And I think one other thing I would point out is that Chinese Internet, having been beaten up quite aggressively over the last couple of years, these are still good business models and the valuations are much more attractive than they used to be. Indonesia and, you know, the possibility of how Indonesia could play a very important role in global supply chains has not been monetized, has not really been milked as much as one would have expected. I mean, it's, it's an underexplored theme. Uh, why is that the case, you think? Because, you know, they're obviously going big on EVs. They're going big on EV supply chains. Uh, they have some of the largest reserves for EV battery products. Um, uh, but, but, but they're not there. They're not there right in the center of the game. Well, I think that ASEAN as a region has been unloved or underloved by investors for about a decade now. And some of the trends you're talking about, such as... Indonesia, Alexander. Well, I, but I mean, I think that investors have been broadly ignoring, or I don't want to say ignoring maybe, but they've been not spending much attention on the Philippines, on Malaysia, Indonesia. Thailand has been an unloved market for quite a long period of time. And some of the trends you're talking about, they take many years to play out. It's not as simple as just saying, like, we will uh, unplug half of our manufacturing capacity in, in the Yangtze River Delta and, and, and plug it back in, in in Vietnam or Indonesia. These are things which will play out over time. But, we, but we've Indonesia seen more money coming back in. Indonesia's been very aggressive about it, you know, whether it's Bakri and Brothers or whether it's uh, President uh, Joko Widodo uh, speaking to Elon Musk to set up shop in Indonesia um, and, and, ho and hosting the G20, right? So, so I think they, they're most aggressive about it. I don't know whether there are enough takers to, to, to come into Indonesia and really scale up because they, ha they have what it takes, but they're not there yet. Well, I think it's happening. We think it's happening. Now, the, the fact that investors haven't been paying as much attention to it, well, that's why active management works, is because we can try and take the side of a trade that someone else hasn't spotted yet. But we do think it'll get there. But again, you can't do this with a, the, the, the snap of your fingers. It takes a little while to play through. And it's a much more stable economy and society than it was 15, 20, 25 years ago.